Hello everyone, this is me, Demetra Kay, and I am sitting here with Donovan throwing rocks and hiding his hands to be. And this is another great edition of Don't Believe the Hype, where we ask you to go deeper than the surface, go deeper than what's being told to you, and figure it out for yourself and to see if it's really what they say it is. And so with that being said, today our question is, What's wrong with dark girls? And I put dark in quotations. Lately, we've been hearing a whole lot. I mean, I shouldn't even say lately, but it seems like as of late, um, the resurgence of the conversation about dark girls not being good enough has come back into the, to, to the well, spotlight. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I don't even know if it's ever really left, but it seems like we've been hearing more about it. So recently, a rapper by the name of Glock9, and I have to go... Really. I have to go and see exactly who he was because I had never heard of him until I saw the video that he did Glock with um, Vlad TV where, you know, Vlad, he does the um, interviews with different people and stuff, yeah. right? And so he talked about, he being Glock 9, the rapper, talked about not wanting to be with dark girls because he is dark and he didn't want to have dark babies. He Wait, recited the line, <laughs> but he did. He recited the line from one of Kodak Black's songs that said he don't want no dark bitch, quote unquote. Mm. Now, he's not the only one that has stated his displeasure um, for dark women. Kevin Hart came under fire a while back. That nigga's dark as Yahoo! Right. <laughs> Damn. Good. He came under fire um, a while back for his comments about dark skinned women having bad credit. Specifically, he said, and I quote, hashtag hands down. Light-skinned women usually have better credit than dark-skinned women. Broke assholes, laugh out loud. And I guess he's a broke assholes as we, you know, mm -hmm. learned he would talk about the dark-skinned women. Now, a contestant on a show called Mary at First Sight, where the contestants, I guess, are paired together by a panel. They've never met each other. I guess they meet each other upon um, going to the altar. Now, this uh, black man by the name of Tristan Thompson, not the basketball player, mm -hmm. although this Tristan Thompson used to be a basketball player, but no relation, he said on the show that he really don't prefer dark women, or women darker than me, is what he said. Now, he's also catching a lot of heat for that remark, along with uh, the Glock 9 guy. Um, and let's see. And so over time, the list of black men that have... Um, stated their dislike for dark women or not wanting to be with dark women, it runs deep. So as I said before, it's not something new, but for whatever reason, the conversation keeps arising. And so I have a couple of things here. Honestly, I hate the term dark. Okay, now when we're describing people, um, skin color as being dark, I think we need to break down the definition of dark. What does dark mean? It means devoid of light, absent of light, lacking light. So, absorbing light. Well, no, the definition says uh, uh, of uh, the void, like yeah. lacking light. You mm -hmm. cannot see in dark. Right, but it, it can't absorb. Well, it can't absorb, but that's not the definition. So, I don't so, give a damn about the definition. <laughs> I, I don't like the term because, I don't, as I said, I don't like it that, that it describes, you know, mm -hmm. people of color in that way. If you really think about it, so I prefer the term chocolate or brown. To me, that sounds much better than dark versus light. Now, again, why does it seem as though chocolate men have a problem with women who look like them? As you said, it was Kevin Hart. Well, he's dark, mm -hmm. if we're using that term. He's dark, uh -huh. so like, how, how, his daughter's dark, his ex-wife was dark, his mom wasn't that light. Low self-esteem, again, and, and, and lack of knowledge of self. Yeah, but it's like, dude, because I could see, and I'm trying to justify it at all, but I could see if you were a lighter skinned man saying that, mm -hmm. then it would kind of make a tiny bit of sense, not much, but a tiny mm -hmm. bit of sense, but you, I mean, Kevin Hart is pretty dark if you really want right. to think about it. He's, I mean, he's, I one, mean he's, he's, he's one of those dark guys that are so dark because his skin's bad that you can see like a, like a butt, like darker here, like sometimes the top and the bottom. Yeah, and he I'm has not making fun of it. Yeah, yeah. discoloration, but. But it's like, how dare you? Yeah, because I'm saying. How dare you? You know, and then so, uh, my other question is, um, why are we still teaching our children self-hate? Like, I've heard a story from um, men, and women too, but specifically men, 
uh, um, saying that their mothers would tell them, especially if they were lighter, be careful with those dark girls out there because they just want to um, have a baby with a light man so they can have a baby with pretty hair and light skin. Sorry. You've never heard of that before? I've heard that. So it's very like, ignorant. Very ignorant. Why are we teaching our kids that? Madness. I mean, I'm hearing of men that aren't that old. Like, I can understand, maybe, sort of, kind of, if it was a man, like, in the 70s and 80s. Mm -hmm. Because that was the Different stuff that generation, was, Yeah, right. but we're hearing this from men who are our age and younger. My mama said, you know, be careful. Don't have no baby with no dark skin women because all she's going to try to use you is for to have a pretty baby with pretty hair. And then I also wondered, like, okay, well, what's pretty hair? Mm -hmm. Describe right. pretty hair. Right. What? You know, and, and then we also hear the term good hair. What is the hair with the curls and the slick? I mean, what? I mean, I, I think I have good hair. You used to have good hair. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, ain't no shame in my game. But I'm saying, so, that why are we still teaching our babies that nonsense? All right. Sorry. And so then, number four on my list is, um, why are we still con conducting paper bag tests? Now, if, um, back in the day, many churches, fraternities, nightclubs, um, use the brown paper bag principle as a test for entrance. So basically, if you were darker than that uh, brown bag, you couldn't get in. Right. In certain sects of black society, they didn't want you bringing around a woman or a man that was darker than that bag. Their ice is colder than ours. We think that the lighter is better. The closer you are to white, the better it is. Right. And so to that point, they didn't want you bringing, you know, and to excuse the term, but this is what they would use, a darkie around or into the gene pool, if you will, because we don't want you darkening the gene pool or tainting the gene pool because we're trying to keep it all above the paper brown bag or whatever. And you know, it's weird because my mom used to tell me about that as I was when I was younger and I thought she was joking. Mm -hmm. Are you serious? She said she actually remembers that being done. Now my mom chocolate. was a, yeah, she was chocolate. Yeah. She was darker than yeah. me. My and father so, was a little dark. Yes. So, so both darker. my parents are, you know, of the darker persuasion, if you will, mm -hmm. chocolate. Mm -hmm. Um, but she said she remembered that people talking about using a brown paper bag, um, to see if you could fit in. Yeah. If you could get in. Mm -hmm. Right. So then um I guess we'll just leave it off with that. And then also with the brown paper bag, I think we should say that that comes from slavery and that we were taught, you know, the lighter you are, the better you are. And that also came from because the slave masters would dip off into the, you know, mm -hmm. slave house and get with the women and mix. And so they might have had somewhat of a soft heart for, um, well, let's keep it real, their family members who, yeah. you know, they bred with the slave women. And so they were allowed to come into the house and be treated better, I don't know if that's a good term, but better than a slave mm -hmm. that were darker. But they weren't getting beat yeah. as much. Yeah, four days out of the week. Of the right, yeah. right. Yeah. So, you know, that's where it came from, the whole division thing. You know, we were taught to be divisive mm -hmm. by something as simple as skin color. Now, admittedly, black people aren't the only ones that do it, but I would say that we do it openly and unapologetically in front of everybody. Like Blast <clears throat> TV, that's a pretty well-known no, internet internet um, interview site. Mm -hmm. You know, this guy, the white guy, he interviews different people. It seems like he interviews yeah. quite a few black people. And, and, and a nice spectrum of interviews. Yes, he does. And I, and I like his interviews because even with the interview with um, Glock 9, he was asking the dude, like, what? Are you serious? Yeah. Well, why not? And he brought to his attention, well, you're dark skin. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, you know, I, I'm i really dark. And can you imagine, you know, what I was the well, baby? What's wrong with that? Like, but that's what Glad asked me. What's wrong with that? with that? Even if the, the baby is blurful, what is wrong he with that? He couldn't really formalize an intelligent argument to that. It was just probably something, I'm quite sure, something he's taught. And then, he, you know, he said, was, was your mom dark skin or woman? Says no, she's. Uh, he said she described her as caramel mocha or something. What black is black? I'm sorry, right. black is black. Forget all that craziness and this and that. Black is black. And then he okay. asked his dad, or asked him, well, what, what is your dad? And he says, oh yeah, you dark. He's you know he's darker than me. You know you should see him. He's darker than me. You know, let's flip that whole thought process. Black means strong. The stronger you are, the black. You know. Well, yeah, we no, know that. We know that. That's what I'm saying. Well, why aren't we people, teaching that? That, that's the question I have. Why Flip in 2018 mm -hmm. are we still teaching mm -hmm. kids that our kids, well, yeah. they're, they're dark. Don't associate yeah. with them. There's something wrong you know, with being dark. If white is so strong, why is it that when you mix it with any other color, white disappears? 
because we have uh, bought into the technology mm -hmm. and the technology has inculcated our minds. You know, that, as you said earlier, the white man's ice is better than ours. The white man's woman is better than ours. The white man's this is better than ours. Hell, I'm going to even try to be white, and I'm going to go on your side of the fence a little bit when you say, you know, especially uh, with some women. Like, I don't have a problem with women wearing weaves, but I do agree that, okay, why do you need to wear a platinum blonde one all the way down to the ground? I mean, it's your prerogative. I'm not telling you what to do, but that, I that do Morlock, question that. That Morlock look is very popular. I see you said that. I did yeah, not that say Morlock that. Look. For those that don't know what a Morlock is, look up the Time Machine, 1960, starring Rod Taylor. And you'll see what a Morlock is in that movie. You said that. Yes, I, I did. Say that. That's what you look like to me. I'm just telling you what it looks but like. I, but I often wonder that to myself, you know, why? why? It's, it's sad. It, you it's know, sad. like, don't you, I thought, okay, get a weave. If you want to get a weave, that's yeah. the ground. Hey, hey. But a blonde one? Right, but here, here's my thing. Regardless of what I say, if you love it and you love yourself, then you go ahead and do it. Right, you. and then, you know, yeah. other people will say, well, there's black people with blonde hair that's born blonde yeah. hair. Okay, fine, but you ain't one of them. You ain't one of them, right. So why are you running around with this blonde hair? And so that's kind of the other pushback I have, too, because I, I, Listen, my daughter is very chocolate, and you can't tell that girl nothing, okay? She, she fine, and she know mm -hmm. it. Terry V said there's nothing wrong with dark skin. Nothing right wrong on, at all. But it's like, for not all, but for some dark skinned women, it's hard to argue the fact, especially if you're one of those dark skinned women who are running around with the blonde hair, and you know, it's like, you're mad because they don't love you. But by appearances sake, and that's just appearances, I don't know how you really feel about yourself, want to argue with them, you don't love yourself. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I mean... Exactly. I, you got to play with the uniform your issue. Simple as that. Well, I don't know if you got to, but the, well, no. do, do the best you can. Well, no, you, you do have to. If you're born black in this world, that's... that's oh, yeah, that's yeah. It. Well, well by it. that, yeah, you, you are who you are, and you yeah. should be proud of proud that. Proud of that, exactly. I mean, it's... Because if, if you want to talk about culture wars and people who treat their uh, people bad based on color and uh, economic status, go to Asia. I, I just came back from Vietnam, what, a month ago, maybe a month and a half ago, two mm -hmm. months ago? And they have American Asians over there and stuff, and those kids were treated badly. The average Vietnamese person is what, 5'2"? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you know, on average, five, two. Okay. You know, they're very small people. Right, okay. I was over there, and you, you're seeing 6'4", six, 6'3", six, dark, half Asian, half black okay. kids over there. And I was talking to this one, he can't speak a lick, a lick of English, but thank, thanks for Google Translator. Uh, you know, we're communicating and stuff. And he says, yeah, my father was a soldier, most likely, you don't know him, whatever. Oh, wow. You know, and they're over there. And he's telling me growing up there, because he was of American descent, not black, but of American descent, but then being black wasn't good either. Right. Horrific childhood growing up now oh because he was treated uh, yeah you're different you're you're not asian you're not of right. that demographic well i think there's a lot of people over here who are you know black and mm -hmm. mix something else will tell but, you but you're yeah, well. yeah 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 but you're in america it's a little easier in the asian cultures because you know they depend on like a big family mm -hmm. to support you know that so they are openly an outcast yes they're openly outcast. okay got it you know i don't know now mm -hmm. more so but when he was growing up got it was it. like very you know the war had just ended and all these oh, kids now, now I think you're talking about like a younger guy. No, no. An older guy. Yeah, he's he, he okay, he got, got it. Yeah, he's got it. Yeah. Right. So, but you know, it's kind of weird you're over there and you've seen this 6 2 Asian guy. You're like, yeah, man, I'm an American. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, but no, but you know, you think you got it bad. I mean, it, it's ridiculous that we have to uh, deal with that kind of situation. And let me ask you this question mm -hmm. Do you think that is a something that was put there to keep us continually split? Oh, yeah. Like well, that, that, again, that came from slavery. It's just something that they did. They being the slave masters, um, separators. And, and people think it's a joke, but no, there was actually a field in word, because I'm trying to be mm -hmm. good, a, a yard and a house. Oh. Were separated by yard birth. nigga, house nigga. Uh, he said yeah, it. Yeah. So that, that was really a thing, and we've just carried it over until now, and we are still doing that. I mean, this guy, Glob Knight, I don't know, he looks fairly young, in his young 20s, maybe. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, wow, who's, who's still teaching that to their kids? Well, I, I, I'm going to give a personal experience. You know, my mom was saying, okay, my grandfather married a very, very dark mm -hmm. woman. 
and I think that's why I have a, a, a affirmation for dark women. I mean, mm-hmm. I, to me, they're they're beautiful. To me, yeah. you know, I'm not saying I would prefer one well, of the over. Well, to me too, yeah. Yeah, I mean, but if I see a black woman, I mean, a dark black woman, I'm like, Ooh, for some reason, beauty personified. And uh, from the stories my mom was saying, basically, I don't know, you know, maybe I'm, and don't take this as gospel because you know, as years go by, my mind's going bad with it. But anyway, she was saying that it was very difficult for my father or it was my grandfather to uh, bring this woman home because they in Louisiana, right? They have a oh, lot that of that, that and Creole that, right. and stuff. And my grandmother was like, "No, like you said, the brown paper bag thing." So yeah. that doesn't exist. So we think about it, that's only one generation removed from that kind of stuff. I process. mean, I've talked to somebody who who was our age who said that um, his mother mm-hmm. would tell him that. Yeah. Be yeah. careful. Right. You know what I'm like? Right. Well, that's odd because your mom is fairly chocolate woman. Right. Yeah. But so it's like, where did I? It's not even just an admonishment to that situation, but it's like, where do you get off? Like, mm-hmm. where in your life did you not see yourself as a chocolate woman, and then you decided to to, uh, to teach your your son the nonsense mm-hmm. about dark women? I don't. That to me is weird. Like, right. where did the disconnect come? Where right. did you stop seeing yourself as a darker woman? Mm-hmm. But you know, uh, kudos to my grandfather because he stuck to his guns, married this woman, had twelve beautiful children with it, with 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 her, and um, I, you know I don't know if there was a rigmarole about it, but I'm from my understanding though, you know, back in those days, he got the eyebrow raised. Yeah, like, back in said, those days. Who are you yeah, back in those days, that brown right. paper bag you're talking about probably was in play. Well, I'm sure it was. Mm-hmm. I mean, hell, it sounds like it still is today. Yeah, and so yeah. that's that's what I don't understand. Like, what, what, why, why? Are we still teaching our babies that nonsense? It's baffling to me. Did you put out a disclaimer before you even started this segment? About what? Okay, I'm see, see, she don't want to tell y'all the real deal. Let me tell you guys the story, okay? D dated Big Daddy Kane. <laughs> okay, as we all know, I'm using Big Daddy Kane no, as a reference. No, Big Daddy Kane. Okay, man. as a reference, you know, he's a dark brother, very good looking, blah blah blah, and um, her. X looked like Big Daddy King with a dark with a darker brother, right? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm I'm just saying, you know. So it isn't like she's talking from something of, and that was like 30 years ago. Where Dan, how old are you? 25? Yeah, 25. So, <laughs> so, so that that was a few years ago. But, yeah. but what, what I'm saying is, you know, this thing that 25 years later is still. A situation, you know, and it's just, it's just crazy to me how that. But you know what? It just in my experiences, not just personally my experiences, but uh, you my prefer experiences. Darker name? I prefer who loves me. There you that, go. That's Good that's answer. my answer. Okay, you are. Good answer. I, 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 like, I, I can't don't, grab it. They, yeah, you ain't grab it. I'm dealing the whole colorism right. thing. You know. Um, me neither. I just. Why should I be happy? I, when I say colorism, now I want to keep it, you know, into the um, brown black yeah. family. Now that's that's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. As far as oh, he's too dark for me. Oh, he's too white. Nah, I don't. Well, I will say this: I've known this family for 30 years, and I've been trying to get into it for 30 years. <laughs> Literally well, trying to get into the brown it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've been trying to get into it for 30 years, <laughs> and uh, I can say this about. My father, my future father. <laughs> Speaking into existence. Yes, and he says this all the time. What did I go wrong with these boys? This boy, this boy, what did I go wrong? Yes, my, uh, my brothers, for whatever reason, they um. Well, my my one of my brothers, his his wife is uh Panamanian. She's black. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she's you know fairly child. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but my other brother uh. Walter is an anomaly to himself. He's trying to spread the love and bring us closer together. <laughs> As he gonna, people, he's he gonna kill me. That's he said his name. But, yeah. Uh, he's yeah. He's a uh, he. <laughs> it's been a minute. Okay, yeah, it's yeah. been a minute that he's he's trying to bring us together. That's what. Is that what he's trying yeah. to do? Okay. Yeah. Uh, a, another good example. I gotta give this disclaimer out there. So then, like, we're just talking top of head. My brother was married to a Caucasian woman. Now, the only problem with that was she was a Jerry Springer guy. Oh my God! Okay. And, I, and I'm going to say that freely because that's how I feel about the situation. So yes, we know how you feel about yeah. your ex sister Yes, yes. So not one of your favorite people. Not one of my favorite people. And again, and Jerry if, Springer. Yeah, I mean, if you, you know, if you're going to go that route, take the money, brother. Stop getting me to see. You know, but anyway, that that's my own personal thing. So you know, we're you know we're we're coming from that experience of you know intermarriages and we see what's going on. But here's here's my point. Of all those kids that were made of, of these unions, what were they taught? Were they taught black? 
or why the paper bag? Um, your enabling pot like that? No, of course we don't teach that because you know you 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 are who you are. To me, the antidote would simply be teach your children, as you alluded to earlier, knowledge itself, mm -hmm. and then you don't have to worry about all that other stuff. Like you teach your child who they are, and I always talk about the story with my daughter. She was about five or so. I went to her back to school night. Or mm -hmm. actually, it was uh, I forget what it was, but it was during um, St. Patrick's time, mm -hmm. day time. And she showed me, she said, Mommy, guess which one is my leprechaun? I knew right away mine mm -hmm. was the one that, hers was the one that was black. She right. was the only one in her class right. that drew a black leprechaun. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure her teacher was probably like, but she never said nothing. Mm -hmm. But the point that I'm making is that is something that I taught her right. for, for as long as I can remember of who she was. I never, like I said, my daughter's very chocolate skin and she never, oh, gorgeous chocolate. never yeah. once have I ever heard her, you know, doubt or have any, um, any, what, what do I say, any negative feelings about her being a dark skinned person. But she shouldn't because she's a beautiful person. I, I mean, mean she beautiful. always tells me, you wish she was teen, dark skinned, dark hat. She can't be like us. <laughs> if it, of course, she's joking, but yeah. she's very proud of her beautiful chocolate yes. skin. And, and so that's what we need to be teaching our kids. Like, forget all that nonsense. I mean, because when you hear somebody say, oh, you you know, that dark person or the dark skin, it's in a, it sounds like it's in a, a negative Context, light. Yeah. yeah, you know, but so there's good and bad people in every shade of black. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm going to tell you a quick story uh, that relates to that. I was in kindergarten and I was going to Catholic school and uh, we had a, the annual Christmas show. And of course, I'm an angel, right? And my mom has this picture today and this was the only time well, I've seen my mom go off several times on me and my brother in public, but no, not, not like that. that. Long wig on you. No. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I'm going to tell you, I mean, it, it, you know, it's just, and that was years off in kindergarten back then. And you, know, you want to be a black angel, you want to be like that. And so you show up for the play, and, you know, kids are getting a little rue on and stuff like that. You know, I'm a kid, I, I want some makeup too. And I'm thinking, yeah. okay, do that, you know, and I'm not paying attention to what's going on. You know, I'm only in kindergarten, so I wasn't raised to be like kids are now. You know, we were very innocent back in our day. So I'm just doing what the adults tell me. So they're putting stuff on my face, powder, whatever the deal is. My mom still has this picture today. And I remember it was the most upsetting time in my mom's life. <laughs> so my mom's, you know, she's there. Well, you know, like most parents, you got the post, the, uh, the camera with the little yeah. glass. You got the glass up there. So she's looking for me. We're on stage, right? And she's looking for me. She can't see me. And then she hears everyone start laughing. Right? They started laughing. Uh-oh. Because... Unbeknownst to me, they had painted my face completely white. Ooh. My mom puts the camera down. Because a black person could have been no angel. My mom went up on that stage and was livid. She didn't like, you know, she didn't do all that. <laughs> she, yeah, she grabbed me, I took, I me been, I stage, been, I been. took me off stage. The principal, you know, everybody was like, calm down, you know, Miss Malloy, blah, blah, blah. She was like, y'all haven't heard of no goddamn black angel? Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> True story. True story. My mom still has that picture to this very day. And I think a year or two later, the, uh, maybe a year later, the principal was fired. I don't know if it was for that incident, but, but what I'm saying is... Yeah, nothing says this little black boy can't be a, a, a angel. angel like painting his face. And my mom was like, if you want some makeup, okay, put a little... The rouge, yeah, or just, you know, the whole face white. Yeah, I painted my whole face white. And my mom still has that picture to this very day. Yeah. To this very day. And you want to see a black one. My mom was only like 5'4". At that time, she was probably 114 pounds. Yeah. Maybe one. If she even is 100 pounds at that She's time. Like, oh, hell she no. She was ready to kick ass at a Catholic school. And it Damn. was unbelievable. You, you mean the church did this to yes. you? And um, she takes me home. And, you know, my mom's upset. Get that shit off of your face! I, I remember it. Yeah. Like, threw me in the shower and washed it. You know, I, you know I'm a kid. I don't know what's going on. So needless to say, you didn't do the Christmas play. No, I didn't do the <laughs> that. And, and, and I really do think that that is the reason why Hollywood has locked me out. Right. They said, no, nah, he got the original <laughs> fake yeah. mama. Yeah. The original mama. Thanks, mom. Okay. <laughs> so, no, but, but no, but you know, they have to continue to deal with that until it's very day. The very first girl that I ever fell in love with, dark skin. Dark. So then, we've already alluded to, but I'm just gonna ask it again. I mean, what, what what do you think we need to do? Knowledge yourself. I mean, I was always taught you play with the uniform your issues. I I can't. I mean, unless you're Michael Jackson or Sammy Sosa and you got money to change. Sammy Sosa just turned that way yeah, overnight. Overnight. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing there. You know what I mean? It, it, 
I mean, it is what it is. I would and, say and, and not everybody can be black. It's hard to be black. It takes a special person to be black. You goddamn right it takes so, a special person. Because you ask the average white person if they want to trade places with us, they go, like, no, no, that's okay. Well, that's okay. I, I would say they would say they wouldn't want to trade places with our struggle per se. But we see it all the time where they want to look, look like, like us. Uh, right, but I'm, I'm just saying like to us. live. Oh, uh, yeah, no, nah, they, no. They, that's where they draw a the line yeah, right yeah, there. Okay. Uh, and, but speaking of which, I'm on my way over here. My daughter shows me uh, the new Late. G2. No, <laughs> I was on time. Yeah. Like, yeah. 11 o'clock, I rang this door. The new GQ magazine cover with Kylie Jenner and her baby daddy boyfriend, whoever he is, Travis Scott. They're on the cover. Um, he's a fairly chocolate man, and yeah, he looks pretty good. I mean, she's she's white. Grown man with braids in his head. You know what? It, but anyway, grown man. She's and straddling she, him. What she, she yeah. Is. Well, okay, but just to to the naked eye, it just looks like a magazine cover with mm -hmm. a guy and his girl, and you know, I don't even know why they're on there to be honest right. with you. But to the trained eye, it says so much more. And so I told my daughter, I said, well, that's kind of odd that we're going to be talking about, you know, the topic, what's wrong with dark girls. Mm -hmm. And then this pops up. And so it's like, you have some black men talking bad about black women, but then you have this cover with this black man with a woman who is clearly white. Mm -hmm. And so nothing says there's something because wrong with no black it. woman right. than a cover like this. Mm -hmm. And so I was telling my daughter, I said, there's got to be something really wrong with a man who will not accept his own woman. Right. Um, I'm not telling you who to be with. Right. I, that, that, that's not even my dog in a fight. Mm -hmm. But it's like, what message are you sending to all the other people, the kids? And I'm not saying they should be a role model. But we know we live in a day and age of social media where, you know, people aspire to be like people who aren't even like themselves. But here you are, a black man on the cover of a very well-known magazine with a white woman who's straddling you. Mm -hmm. So, I mean... To Mama, me, I made it! Well, I <laughs> no. mean, I guess, but what does that say to, the, to these other black women, okay. or these black girls? Okay, to your point. So you're saying a subliminal message has been sent and it, and it can affect a lot of young men, right? A lot of but young um, men, men and, and women. women, yes. Okay, right. So, so then we are in agreement that when you wear a weave, I'm just saying 24-7, that is sending a message as well. Well, yeah, it's sending a message, um, especially if, like I said before, and I know it probably catch some heat, if it's one of those ones that are blonde all the way down mm -hmm. to the ground, you know, down well that and grow out your scalp. Uh, but the same thing is true for a black man who per, uh, constantly parades. And I'm trying to think, well, I guess we have Serena Williams, but we, we I think, and I could be wrong, so don't quote me, we predominantly see magazines highlighting black men with white yes. women mm -hmm. and so i think we need to ask ourselves what are they really trying to tell or us or if there is a black woman let, let's get uh tyra banks with her white man is or, she a white man or, well they're divorced now right? oh, okay. they broke up um or uh halle berry with her white man they highlight that because it works in reverse as well well no i i totally agree and so but i'm i'm using the cover yeah. of this as just a, you know a leap pad and the white woman looks all horish, so. Yeah, I don't understand mm -hmm. that. You know, I mean, I guess if I was white and I saw that cover, I would be a little bit mad. Mm -hmm. Like, damn, he got this woman tramping all over the damn place. Mm -hmm. And then there's one over picture. Over that. Yeah, there's, but there's one picture. I mean, I don't know anything about Travis Scott, but then there's one picture where he's, he's kind of got like in a chokehold and she's in a, you know, leotard. It's like, yeah, that's but a he's bad fully message. dressed. He's fully that's dressed. that's a bad message. She's. Helpless white woman, oh my god! I mean, I don't know, I just, I, I'm not often, I, I've been saying this a lot, often speechless, but when I see that kind of stuff, like to us, we think it's entertainment, oh, it's just a cover of a magazine, no, it's not. They, or it's just this, but okay, it's so much more. Yeah, stop, stop right there. Nothing in the media is it's just, entertainment and just, right, right. Yeah, yeah. it's there for a purpose, and if you don't understand that, it's called mind control. If you don't understand that, then... Your control, your mind is under and so control. And so, how many black boys and mm -hmm. men or whoever mm -hmm. will see that and be like, "Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, that I got to get me one." Or the ones that are already uh, disparaging in regards to black women, how many of them are saying, "Yeah, that's why you know you got to get you a white woman." And I mean, it's just well, so many things well, that go to my through my head when mm -hmm. I see that. Well, remember in the early two thousands, you had Triple uh, XL magazine, you had um, King. All these magazines and what was their primary purpose? To showcase 
these video vixens and whatever you want to right. call them. And a lot of those magazines don't even exist anymore because, you know, the well, genre fell Instagram out. Market. Yeah, their Instagram now is down. So the Vogue fell out. But what I'm saying is it, 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 everything sends a message. And now there's a big message where all these urban models now think that they are celebrities and they're really not. Well, and to me, when I see stuff like that and just reiterate the point we keep making, mm-hmm. is that it's very important, especially to tell your daughters. You're beautiful. And, yes, and your sons. Let's just say your children. Who they are. They constantly, constantly. Like, um, one person that comes to mind is DJ Khalid. I think that's how you say his name. Khalid, Khalid or whatever his name is. Um, you see him in different videos and he's always constantly edifying his child. Mm-hmm. You're this, you're the best, you're the greatest. Mm-hmm. You know, this he just always we gotta do that to our children. We gotta constantly Wait, edify them. I'm gonna have to disagree with you right there. We do that. We give our children's names like stop. Uh, Malik. I mean these great names. Well and, and and yet we don't hold the kids accountable to live up to Well, it's not that we gotta hold the kids accountable, we gotta hold ourselves accountable sure. because if we if, the kids only know what they're being taught. Right. And especially as mothers, we are the first teachers. And so we're naming our children something like Malik or, you know, something very kingly. Mm-hmm. We need to teach them to be kings. We can't just name them that and then send them out to do ratchet or things. Or stay and, in an environment that is detrimental to them uh, adding to society. Right. Well, I mean, you just you, it's what you teach your children. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can name them, I don't know, whatever you want. Mm-hmm. The name... To me, it's not as, as important as it is what you're exactly. actually teaching your mm-hmm. child to do and who you're teaching them to be. And so it is important that we edify our children and we build them up, not just, um, you know, to be a positive person, but build them up in their blackness. Because mm-hmm. in today's society, mm-hmm. everything is telling black people you don't matter, you, don't you exist, ain't this, you ain't you, right. Mm-hmm. And then you have a cover like this. Where we we see a black man, I'm assuming he's got something going on, but he's not with a black well, woman. Well, I'm going to give you another example of how uh, the media uses, this is all mind control. They use these things. You have movies like Precious, where they show a, a black, young black girl. And to me, that, that, there's nothing wrong with that girl, other than, you know, of course, as a most Americans, she's obese, you know, health-wise. Mm-hmm. But here's a beautiful black girl, and she and she played that role to, to the till. And... When we think of a dark girl, that's what we think of the the big monster. But that's yeah, I mean know, that, so. that's that's the media, and it's mm-hmm. not even just the media. We have like uh, you know Eddie Murphy was taking the task on um, the movie uh, Norbit, which I found very funny. My mom's favorite movie. And you know I, I like the movie. Mm-hmm. I like the movie on its comedic. I do. Right uh, <laughs> on his on his comedic uh, content, but there's a lot of people was like you know what Eddie. Too much to learn. Well, that, but you you portraying black women in a negative light. Like you said, loud, fat, and mm-hmm. black. Mm-hmm. But then the devil's advocate part of Where's me says... Where's the Medea? Well, I, Where's the big mama? Well, all of them. You mm-hmm. know, but the, the other part of me wants to know, is there a little truth to that? Yeah. Just a little. Right, right. Just a little. Not, right. Listen, There's I'm a little not, truth to everything. But I'm not saying that that's all black women, because right. we know that is that's not. not true. But unfortunately... Those are the black women, per se, that get portrayed. Like you said, Medea, mm-hmm. Eddie Big Murphy, or Respucia, mm-hmm. Big Mama, mm-hmm. the loud, fat, black mm-hmm. woman, and mm-hmm. hush your mouth, shut your mm-hmm. all this other stuff. So, you know, um, what happened to your roles like your Felicia Rashad, um, you know, Mrs. Cosby, and mm-hmm. all of the other, uh, your Florida Evans? Mm-hmm. So what happened to those women? So, those are the ones that get portrayed. Um, negatively, and like you said, they just so happen to be dark skinned, or mm-hmm. as I like to say, they happen to be chocolate, but they got to be the bad, mm-hmm. you know, big, bad, mean, acting loud, talking, taking notes, you know, all that nonsense. Yeah, you guys remember the movie Which Way Is Up starring Richard Pryor, where he was the first person to have to do three roles in one movie. That's where uh, Eddie Murphy gets all that stuff from mm-hmm. in that movie. Remember uh, Sister Sarah in the movie? Mm-hmm. He was portrayed as a dark, strong, aggressive black Flip woman. Flip Wilson, Geraldine, Geraldine, you know, there you go. all mm-hmm. that. So, I mean, I don't know. I just think, like I said, it's going to have to start with us and what we teach our children. That is not you. What you see is not a reflection of you. I have raised you to be kings and queens in the literal sense because you come from you. Shun it. That's what we need to start doing. 
but, but, and when you hear but, but how do you do that when mom is on section eight, blah 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 blah. Well, I mean, and daddy's listen, in jail I, or he's not there. there at all. I, and I would like to push back this too. I've never been on section eight or any of that kind of stuff. But just because a person is mm -hmm. on section eight does not mean that they all come from ignorance. There's a lot of people who are section eight for various reasons. Now we, I know you, the, the stereotypes that yeah, you're talking um, about. Right. Um, but I would just impress upon those people who you are speaking of mm -hmm. to get some knowledge yourself and start learning about who you are uh, to break the cycle to, to teach your that. children that they are better than what the media says they are mm -hmm. and that even a lot of us say that we are, you know? Absolutely. So Because it ain't where you're from, it's where you're going and the journey to get there. Right, and, and, where, and, and what you are teaching yourself how to get there, so... I get a lot of blowback. I, you know, I, I came from a, a, you know, a Trinity Gardens in Chicago, and I'm a lawyer now. Great, okay, and, uh, and it kind of adds on to, to what we're talking about yesterday. Yesterday I was in uh, Office Max or Office Depot, mm -hmm. whatever that one is, and I was in line, and this, this older brother comes up to me, and he, you know, whatever, and he sees me, and I was like, oh, how you doing? Know, and we started having a little conversation. And he goes, to, he had a family, a school, school reunion, and this guy's like 70 something. So. And he showed me the picture. I was like, oh, that's what that's. Goes, yeah, this person's a doctor. This person is a brother, a lawyer. And he kept telling me about, you know, how great he is and what he got. I drive a Mercedes and this, this, that. And um, he was saying this is a the first black cop in Compton and this, this, that. And I said, well, you know, okay, that's really good and great. And I went back to him and I said, what good is being the first black cop or the first woman DA, how does that contribute to our community and what has that contributed? You couldn't answer the question. But what, I, but what I'm trying to say is we have to get, we have to stop talking about what we got, whatever. That doesn't matter if it isn't contributing to our community. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah and, um, and not teaching your children about who they are, mm -hmm. that doesn't contribute to our community at all. Exactly. That takes away from our community because it's like yesterday I had a conversation with these and I, these very ignorant people on social media, which I ain't supposed to be on. But I'm not to no, no, not no. <laughs> okay. But um, this black man posted up in his group that um, he said animals take care, male animals take care of their children. Why don't black men? Now this is a black man saying this, y'all. A black man said this, mm. and so mm. I said to him. It would behoove you to do your research and know that, but the ba dead be the uh, black baby daddy is a myth that does mm -hmm. not exist. Yeah, it doesn't exist. Statistically, we spend more time with our children Absolutely. than any other age. That's the narrative that has been put forth by white media, media about black men, and I was like, you should be ashamed of yourself to keep, you know, forwarding that nonsense. And mm -hmm. he wanted to argue with me, and then some other he people got on there that. arguing mm -hmm. with me, and I was like, listen, Google is free. Yep. You can, if you don't believe me, research this stuff right. for yourself. Black men spend more time with their children than any the other, other man. And mm -hmm. so, it's just like, gosh, because we don't know who we are, we just glom on to the lies and we continue to spread them. And it's like, dude, you're a black man. If anybody should be defending you, it should be you. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. because you're ignorant, you won't, you're just going forward with the lies. You don't know who you are. You just believe, as we say, you believe the hype about who you are. Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, basically I have to tell them, you're not equipped to have this conversation with me anymore. Well, 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 <laughs> Goodbye. Well, 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 here, here's what I usually say to shut that down. Fuck you and good night. Yeah, okay. I okay. usually say, uh, Satan get me behind yeah, me and never right, speak to right, me again. Right. Um, but. I'm going to tell you my personal thing of what I like about dark skin women. All right okay. now. Okay. Chocolate women. Chocolate women. I mean, no, I like them blurple. I'm serious. They're, to me, when you look at their skin, it is just flawed. It's like looking at this cord. They could be cut, you know, okay, like I'm I'm chocolate. Um, you can see scars in my skin, flaws in my skin. Mm -hmm. You know, we take the time to try to get those blemishes out and stuff like that. These dark skin uh, people, their, their skin is just flawed. It just flows. It's beautiful. like a black pearl. It's mm -hmm. beautiful. And then... You know, because they're, you know, just the what ones that I've encountered, I mean, I, I have yet to, you know. So, how do you explain for that chick that looked like Beyonce I saw you with? How do you account for that? The dark skinned sisters don't like me. They, they want a light skinned brother, the Puerto Rican brother. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, <laughs> I, I mean, it ain't my fault. <laughs> so, no. But, no. Um, I, mean, I mean, to me, when I see a, a black, and I have a lot of black, dark black people in my family. 
to me, that, that's like the epicenter of what blackness is. It's like, wow, you, you know, you're there. I agree. I, I mean, um, I'm not that I'm light. I'm not mm-hmm. light. But my siblings were a lot um, darker than me, mm-hmm. and I always wanted to be right their now. color. Mm-hmm. Like, why can't I be their color? Mm-hmm. Always. I mean, I just yeah. remember looking at my sister and her skin, you know, just so, you know, beautiful yes. and yes. brown and soft. <laughs> oh. I wanted to, Ooh. I always wanted to be like her. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I, I agree. I just, to me, that is it. To me, that's like, you have those people that have that definition in their skin like that. You you've been touched by an angel. I mean, even if like I can always try to tell my daughter, where's the color on your skin face? And you know, we'll just give it little props because of your beautiful no. skin. It's like now. And, and, and just think about <laughs> this, you know, uh, when they wear the clothes, especially women, when you guys like put that red on against that dark black skin or that yellow, mm-hmm. it just it just a you know it just comes out more. Right. It's, it's, it's awesome. That's why I don't understand why. I, I, how do we get? I mean, I get how we got there from mm-hmm. slavery, but it's like. Yeah, we, we we still here. Mm-hmm. Anybody can see that, you know, chocolate skinned people are beautiful. And yeah. if you can't, there's something wrong with you. One well, one of my old uh, friends, and she was based at the base with me. She retired as a colonel in the Air Force. Um, her name was Cynthia. I'm gonna give her last name. But her husband, he was enlisted, and he got commissioned. So I kind of followed behind him. Cause I said, "How'd you do it?" And he kind of hit me up some game. Yeah, I see. And um, his wife was like dark like that, and. I mean, just just beautiful to me. I mean, she until this very day, she's and another thing about when they're dark like that, they don't. It looks like they don't age unless they really partied, partied hard. I mean, she looks pretty much as she did thirty years ago. Yeah. You know what I mean? And this other girl uh, that I had a crush on, I had a man, I was in love with everybody. Okay. But, no, no, no. But you know, especially the dark one. She has a beautiful daughter that plays for basketball. And she recently got married. Uh, again, uh, her. No, no, no. You know, she only been married twice. But what I'm saying is, she still looks. Like she did 30 years ago. I mean, like they don't crack. Yeah, they don't age. It's the, their their skin is. What's like, that melanin, baby? Yeah, it's that it's, melanin. I mean, I you know, and I just I saw her and I was just like, How old are you again? <laughs> no, you know, but even when I saw her for the first time. Well, I mean, you being a very um chocolate man, mm-hmm. I, a lot of times people don't think that you're the age you are. Yeah, I get that. They're the day they're. They're, they're like, know. Nah, you ain't 47. You 60. No. <laughs> yeah, 48. By the way. So uh, right. yeah, but no, I, I get that no, a yeah, lot. You do. Yeah. yeah. Until, until I take off the cat and say, "Oh damn!" No. <laughs> so. Wow. Hey, this is for low maintenance. I, you know, uh-huh. I, I really uh-huh. like that. <laughs> you get my age. Women don't care what you look like. They want to care if you can pay the bills. Okay. So. Wow. 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 No, but I mean, you know, you really gotta look at that. that. That's why when I see dark skinned people running away from their people, strive to be like that. It's, it's self hate. Yeah, it yeah. It's been taught, as Malcolm X said, mm-hmm. "Who taught you to hate yourself?" Right. right. I mean, a good example: uh, Apple Thunder the Watch, your sister. To me, that is the educated, beautiful, dark skinned body down. I mean, just <laughs> every, you know what I mean? Just, just the yeah. whole package. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. Well, I mean. I don't know. I just like I said. I just don't understand how we, like, why we keep having this conversation. Silly to me. Silly, very silly. It's very silly. Very, very silly. So, um, but you know, like you and, and and your daughter. I mean, she's a very positive girl. Got her head on her shoulders. Her daddy's crazy, but that he was a marine. <laughs> but uh, you know, well, right? I mean, you know, I mean, she. I mean, she could have a pick of anything she wants out there. I mean. But she's keeping it low key right now. She's right. almost done with school and she's gonna go live her life. And then when she's fifty, she'll go ahead and get married. Okay. Well, like I said, if she follows mom and, and hits a couple of bases, no problem. They're gonna <laughs> they shoot that up in a heartbeat. You know what I'm talking about? Don't see that little thing. I told like, you <laughs> once before. Those are research missions. M- missions, right? Okay? Right. But I'm just saying because if she's so attractive, they'll skip her up in a minute. No, no questions asked there. So, but uh, you know, in conclusion, you got anything else going on? Um, your last show last week did very, very well. And yeah, it's, it's getting better all the all time. All the time. I mean, that was a great topic. And what was the topic? Uh, and the, the cry, cry of Angela? Angela Rye, yes. And a lot of people had a lot of Where questions. Where I asked Donovan to make sure the camera goes up and he <laughs> went. Hey, there's nothing wrong with the way you are. You, know, you, you got a man. What you wear? You got a man. 
So You're damn right. <laughs> so, uh, hey, in the second hour, we're going to keep it real. Uh, don't believe the hype. You guys have heard about your president out there. He has basically thrown America under the bus. It's the first time in history that this has happened. We're going to talk a little bit about that in the second uh, section, and we're also going to talk about local politics. People have been telling me, I need to stop my attacks on Denise Fleming. But what you got to ask yourself is, are my attacks made up, or is it based on fact? And if it's based on fact and you're in the, in the political realm, that comes with the job. We're going to see you guys in the second hour. You guys stand by.